Mine is a very rare and extreme opinion, but there's little to nothing this world can offer me. What others hold as valuable to me is worthless. My citizenship is not here. All my dreams and hopes are in the Father's kingdom. So let me ask you a question regarding God's kingdom. Are you planting seeds for the harvest? while doing God's will and storing up treasures in heaven? Or are you focused on fool's gold? Sentimental memories and material wealth motivated by short-term, paper-thin aspirations. With no elevation above earthly endeavors, are your goals and ambitions only those validated by earthly status quo? A life adorned with momentary trinkets of eternal worthless memorabilia, all which will turn to dust along with your faded memory of them upon judgment day. Are you there or not there? If you're still with me, Shalom. Thank you for joining me. Let's begin. Remember Lot's wife? While fleeing a wicked city with her husband, she turned around and looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. Are we in the body looking behind? Are our goals and dreams rooted in the world or are we looking forward to the kingdom? Ask yourself, are you eagerly awaiting the arrival of our king or secretly hoping he takes his good time because truthfully you're not ready to leave this fallen world. Luke 17 33 Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it and whoever loses his life will preserve it. If you had just one minute to say something to someone that might help change their life, what would you tell them? To the unbeliever living in the world, I might say, I know it's fun now. And you think when the joy fades, you'll just find another way to live your best life. But like that night out at your favorite club, or that trip overseas you couldn't wait to go on, it's all going to end eventually. Like your life without the Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. In Acts 4.12, it explains what I might tell them about Jesus. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And to the believers who are looking to live as well as possible while they tiptoe through life on cruise control until the rapture, or to those who are waiting for the false prophetic transfer of wealth all the wolves are telling people about, while motivational speakers encourage you with that bucket list of goals and desires in the world, the only goals in this world that matter to our Father are the ones that bring him glory and bring people to the gospel. In 1 Timothy 4.1, it explains that some will depart from the faith. And I know most believe once saved, always saved. That in John 10.29, it says, No one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. But it also says in Hebrews 6, 4-6, and please listen carefully because most pastors won't teach this verse. It says, It is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they should fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, 
seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God of flesh, and put him to an open shame. The implication of this word fall away suggests that it's far greater than a Christian who has backslidden or stumbled. Just like the seven churches in Revelation, it seems clear that it is possible to lose your inheritance. While pastors will say, that person was never saved to begin with, but that's not what this verse is saying or the letters to the church. It's talking about the believers. So tell me, somebody please tell me how you could read this verse while being in denial of many truths of this world while chasing goals and desires of this world and still feel all is well with their soul. This is not condemnation. It's just something to think about. God bless you all. This series, God's Plan Loading, is meant to be short two, three minute videos with an occasional extended version. But I'm not a teacher or a leader. I'm just a humble watchman trying to use my gift that God gave to point out things in the world that scripture warned about. But today I wanna to bring you someone who is a teacher. Please take a moment and listen to the urgent message from Brother Ron of Truth Unedited. At this point in time in our lives, it's very important that we all take reflection of our walk with Yah. If you understand that this world is trying to pull you away from Him and distract you from Him, then you really must understand how important it is to really prioritize Him in your life and make sure that you're aligned to Him. Yeah, I know, we all have lives. We have responsibilities. Living in this system that they've created, it has made us so that we must focus on many different aspects of life to survive. Life is not as simple as just find good land, hunt, eat, sleep, repeat. The world has become very complex, and survival is based upon economics and not simply by farming and hunting. And because of this, our lives can often be taken in the direction of the system and following its path rather than following Yah's plan. We are so caught up with succeeding in the system that we have attached our lives to the system. And then many of us just casually just bring Yah into it. Like we say to God, this is my life. These are my goals. God, will you please bless them? And by consequence, Yah has been turned into some sort of genie instead of being our master. And being in a relationship with the Most High, it's important that we all take inventory on who is in control and who it is serving who. Are we serving him or is it him serving us? Unfortunately for most, it's the latter, and many have not had their eyes open to this fact. The good news is that because this system is changing, it will be a real reality check to the majority that all your goals and all your aspirations that are more about serving yourself more than serving Yah they will come to nothing. And hopefully at that time, people will have enough time and sense to understand that their only source is Yah. He's not a genie granting wishes. And we are not here to serve this rebellious world system. We are here to prepare Yah's kingdom and bring others into it. And when we attach ourselves to that reality and align to his purpose for our lives, he will provide us with purpose and direction. So as we live out our days, it is important that we do this self-reflection and understand who we are following and who we let lead us. Are we following the world and the direction it is leading us, or are we following Yah and His will for our life in this world? The answer to this question will make all the difference in the world, so we need to discuss it. Let's begin. Okay, so let me ask you, does your outlook of the future match with the will of Elohim? What I'm asking is, does your view match what Yah has told us in his word? Or does it match more with what the world generally hopes for? These things mainly being peace, prosperity, equality, and success? It's a reasonable question to ask ourselves. Many people say they believe in God, and they say that they accept Yahusha for their salvation. 
But when it comes to what Yah has said about the world and his coming judgment upon it, it seems that many ignore his prophecies on the matter. This is a problem for most, but absolutely a big problem for today's church. A large percentage of the Christian community gets up every Sunday to go to church, not looking to understand how to be more aligned with the will of Yah, but they are looking for lessons to achieve prosperity and abundance so that they can receive more of the resources of this world. But the question is, is that purpose biblically sound? Too many of us are driven by our own need for success and to obtain the riches of life. We have such a love of this world that often places us in complete opposition to the God that we say that we love and worship. Many of us ignore or don't even know of his doctrine calling us to not be of this world. We all need to ask ourselves some serious questions because the direction that the world is heading towards is the exact same direction that Yah has told and forewarned us about in his word. And the hard truth is that so many of us are so involved in the ways of the world while professing a strong love for the Messiah that we are confused and are double-minded. A majority of believers in Yahusha today are chasing after success that has been marketed to us by this world system. We are trying to prove ourselves in this world that we are smart and capable and can do big things. That we can make money and reach high levels in society. Basically, we have committed ourselves to serving this world system. We are obligating ourselves to a system for the dead. But we are so blinded, we are unable to see this. We have committed ourselves to serving this world and trying to become wealthy or just recognized or noticed. This is how the world has trained us to be. But do you think that that view or those goals are biblically what Yah intends for us when we are deemed to be successful? Answer this sincerely. Is it a goal of Yah for us to obtain wealth and success in this world? Is it a goal of Yah for us to have peace and racial equality? Are these his goals? In his word, he never spoke of those things being what we should make our priority and set our mind towards. When I'm on social media, I hear a lot of people who speak for Yah. They are always suggesting that the best times have yet to come. That God has a blessing for you and all you need to do is declare it. Now to clarify, they are not speaking of the eternal treasures and blessings Yah has for us when Yahusha calls for his bride. They are speaking of the pleasures and treasures of this world. That their season of financial success is right over the horizon. The most deceptive thing is that these people are always the most positive types and quite often they are pastors themselves. People like T.D. Jakes or Joe Olsteins, for example. But then we have plenty of people in the secular that talk like that as well. In his speech for a lifetime achievement, Puff, he spoke so confident about his relationship with God and that he was a godly man and that he has a vision for the world. First of all, I want to thank God. God, thank you. Thank you so much. Never leaving my side. I've had friends ask me, what do I think about Diddy because he's always talking about God right now? My answer is simple. If you think he's referring to the God of the Bible, that is only because you yourself don't know the God of the Bible. Diddy is attached to the world and where the world is heading, and he is desiring to be a leader or an example to help lead the lost. Because he is deemed successful in the eyes of the world, and then he speaks about God, people follow that vision and use him as an example for themselves. But he is not aligned with Yah, and not aligned with the righteous plan that Yah has for the world. But if you do not understand Yah, you may never know this. We cannot follow these type of people. This can be hard for many people to really understand, especially when we're talking about the movers and shakers of the world, those who have become icons for the majority. It can be often hard to discern, because they're not talking about anything negative, and they keep bringing up God. They even classify themselves as Christians. But the question is, are the goals that they represent biblically sound? Does their view match up with the word of Yah? The sad answer to that question many times is no. And if you've been following them or examples like them, they will lead you in the opposite direction that Yah desires for you. All that positive talk can be very deceptive. That goes right into the New Age religion. These people that often sound very positive, they sound like the type of person that you may want to be around. Many people often like hearing their views. 
The masses love to identify with this God that only wants us to be rich, happy, and successful if we work hard for it, only being positive. No one wants to even consider, and many deny, the loving God that will eventually judge the earth based on his word that he left us. They don't even recognize that Yah doesn't care about your bank account more than he cares about your service to him. They don't recognize that God doesn't care about their career, but that he's placed you in certain places with certain resources in order for you to be positioned to serve him. I know it's a lot easier for people to hear messages from people like them, these people with their positive attitudes, rather than living in reality and hearing messages that don't align with that fake positive view that they want to hold on to. Today, people are so weak. They can't deal with reality and only desire to hear lies, even though in their heart, they know that these lies and distractions are leading them towards chaos and destruction. But unfortunately, this is prophesied to be this way. The Bible prophesies that in the last days, people will not accept sound doctrine and they will have itching ears seeking to hear from teachers that align with what they want to believe in. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up from themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. That's exactly what we see happening today. That's exactly what I was just explaining. People looking for these positive messages that are fables and have nothing to do with the truth of Yah, but are completely aligned to Satan and his direction he is taking this world. Doing this self-reflection will help make sure that it is not you that has these itching ears. The word tells us that Lucifer became proud and wants to ascend to the heights of heaven like Yahuwah. He wants to be worshipped in place of Yahuwah. He wants to be like the Most High. This is his goal. And to obtain it, he has been carefully guiding this world in that direction. Many do not realize that they are moving more in line with the goal of Satan more than they are pleasing the Elohim of Israel. Their worldview is completely secular, but later they add Jesus in so they feel better about themselves. Their goals in life are not about our Father's will. Understand this point clearly. For believers, it's supposed to be his kingdom come, his will be done. His will be done. But so many of us are only thinking about ourselves. It's our kingdom come, our will be done. What well, we say out of our mouths that we love Yahusha. Yahusha says in Matthew chapter 15, verses 8 and 9, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. How many of us are worshiping him in vain, honoring him with our lips and our mouths, but our hearts are far from him? How many of us are getting caught up with the ways of this world? We start picking sides in this fake political system that forces us to go against any moral beliefs that we hold, but we feel that we actually have to pick a side. We start trying to get ahead in this world and sometimes step over a few people to get where we're trying to go. But it's okay because we're just playing the game. But it's not okay. Many of us do not know that we align more with Satan and his goals more than we do with Yah's plan. Satan believes in do what thou wilt, meaning do what you want, and the survival of the fittest. Only the strong survive. And when we align to that system and way of thought, we no longer focus on placing Elohim's commands about everything else in priority. We no longer think about helping the poor and weak. We forget that it's more of a blessing to give than to receive. Many of us have replaced Yah's plan for our own plan, and then we just include him in there later. We want to be rich. We want to be successful. We want to be liked. We want to be famous. We want nice things. And so what we have done is align ourselves with the world and its goals and its ways and ignore the true purpose we were created for. These ways are not Yah's goals for our life. Satan has dangled these ways in our face. He told us and showed us that these are the paths that we need to take in order to obtain it, and then keeps us distracted by devices and sellouts, so that for many of us, it is difficult to get off the path. We all need to get back to the plan Yah has for our lives. And we will only understand what that is when we actually start meaning 
his kingdom come, his will be done. We all need to get away from that false reality, the matrix that Satan has created for us. Stop worrying about these fake leaders like Trump and Biden and what they're doing. They are like every other president, just a puppet of the true elite that take their orders directly from Satan. Stop worrying about becoming rich and successful. This world economy is built on unsustainable debt and it's going to collapse. The money of today will be worthless tomorrow. I mean, you're seeing small glimpses of this today as they keep talking of inflation and Biden just forgave $10,000 of student debt. Money is not real when they're able to do this kind of things. They keep showing this to us, but we're not listening. I really want you to imagine and understand how bad it really is to give your life and dedicate your life to this system that is not real and only meant to enslave you. I mean, it's ridiculous, but this is exactly what a majority of the people of the world do today. Stop talking about politics and being part of political divides. These sides have been created to separate us. They are tools of mass manipulation. Oh, and that goal of world peace that many are hoping for, this goal is satanic. And it will only come through after war and destruction and worship of the Antichrist. World peace comes through worship of the beast. And in your desires and goals for this world, if you're looking for racial equality, you're looking for someone to really fix the racial issues around this world, you are deceived. This is not Yah's plan. You don't even understand why these racial problems exist. It has nothing to do with skin color, but more about bloodline and nations. Either way, know this clearly about this racial equality that the world seeks and protests for. True peace and love will only be found through Yahusha, the Messiah. And look, the world is rejecting him. That peace and equality is not coming. Whatever equality you're seeking will come with a lot of other things that you don't want. These are not Yah's plans. These things are a part of the plans for this world. And if you're aligning yourself with these goals, as well as others, rather than being a vessel for Yah, doing his will to prepare as many as you can to worship him, our creator in spirit and in truth. If you're more part of the world's plan than Yah's plan, then you are following the wrong goals and the wrong plans. You were not created to serve this world system, and it will be better for you to come to terms with this understanding before everything collapses and the world changes. You need to make James chapter 4 verse 4 a part of your daily life and live through it. It says, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with Elohim? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of Elohim. Please know that your desire of being a friend of this world makes you an enemy of God. So you must realign your values and your beliefs. You must make Yah's will the priority of your life. All these goals you have had for yourself may have seemed good, and maybe everyone else that knows you supports you and is proud of you because you're heading out into the world and doing well. But it does not matter in the end if you have made our creator an afterthought. What you are actually doing is the practice of idolatry. You're placing idols in priority over him, and the idol that you're prioritizing is yourself. As an example, I have an older family member who raised four kids. Now she raised them responsible, ambitious goal-getters, ready to take on the world and get all they can from it. She's proud of herself and according to the ways of the world, she should be. No one of the world can deny that. But for me, my heart weeps for these kids because the further they go out to obtain the world, the more of an enemy of Yah they are making themselves and they don't even know it. They are completely aligned to the ways and mindsets of this world. This path that they are on leads straight to death and hell. But the world cheers them on and makes them feel that they are doing the right thing. And so they continue. And this is a common situation for the majority of us. Many of us have made the mistake of raising our families with the mindset of being accepted by the world and less accepted by Yah. I have a close family member that says, we all just need a little balance. But that's a new age satanic mindset. That balance will send us straight to hell. When you say you are balancing your love for God with living practical in this world, you're trying to balance God with Satan. Whenever you're doing this, Satan has won. We may get ridiculed, have less friends, 
lose respect from others, maybe get our feelings hurt. Many bad things will happen when you get out the matrix, but we mustn't concern ourselves with those things. We need to please Elohim more than we are trying to please men. All of those negative things I just mentioned are just a part of bearing our cross. Yahusha said in Mark chapter 8 verses 34 through 38, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Maybe you have gained respect for many others. Maybe the world is embracing you and you are reaping much success in the world today. Maybe you feel that that's how you must raise your kids in order for them to make it in this world. Understand, all of that is not from Yah's plan. That is from the goals and plans that Satan has created for you to distract you from Elohim's plan. It doesn't matter if you're successful in this world and this world has embraced you. That would only matter if we didn't truly have a creator that had his own purpose for us. But let me tell you that we do. And it's up to you to decide if he matters more than gaining this world. You have to make this decision for yourself. No one else can make it for you. Your outlook for the future must be aligned with the word of Elohim. It should not be based upon the teachings of this world. You cannot be like many people of today, including the leaders and the members of these churches. These people don't look to Yahusha for what he says about his second coming and his judgment. That's not their focus. They are all about a social gospel, a tainted false gospel that has poisoned the minds of the masses that follow them. They are looking for him to help them reap certain benefits to live a good life here on earth. They are seeking earthly treasures, maybe even expecting that these treasures are what Elohim wants for them. They think he wants them to be successful in obtaining the things in this world. But don't ever forget that the world hates Yahusha. And he challenged us and asked, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? John chapter 15 verses 18 and 19, Yahusha says, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Please know and understand, it's better that the world hates you more than loves you. Don't be a follower of Yahusha that is a lover of this world that he told us not to be a part of. How many in the church do you think really have lost that message? It seems like too many. They've either lost the message or never knew it in the first place because they're not reading his word and they found people that will tickle their itching ears, teaching them worldliness instead of righteousness. Or they are picking and choosing what parts of the Bible they want to believe in and they forget the rest. Maybe a better word is ignore. This video was made to be a wake up call for anyone that needs a realignment of their goals. Because time is almost up. And the good news is that you still have time to make things right. This video is about people aligning their worldview with what Abba, our father, has told us through his word. We all must read it. We must not be of this world. We must base our opinions on what Elohim has said and what he wants for us. When we align our views with what the world believes and says, we run a very big risk of not understanding what the Father really wants for us, the world, and his church. We run the dangerous risk of Yahusha saying to us, I never knew you. Please do not follow someone merely because they have a positive message for tomorrow. Do not follow them simply because it's a simpler choice and easier and more pleasant to hear. Beware of those that speak for God but not with scriptures, regardless of how positive they may sound. Always make sure that it 100% aligns with the word of Elohim. So what should be the takeaway from a message like this? A message that may mean that you need to revamp your whole way of life. Don't take this as a message that says, stop everything you're doing because it's all wrong. That is not the takeaway here. The takeaway is, for now on, we must put Yah first in our life. We must make him our priority. 
the first thing that each of us must do that may feel guilty of this, we must talk to him and repent for not putting him first. And from now on, we will make sure that we do. Start your day with him. Read his word first. Don't focus more on understanding the things of this world more than understanding him and his ways. That's where the disconnect is. Make his will the priority and be prepared and willing to move if he moves you away from certain decisions you made priority for you said he will be your focus. If it is right for you, he will give you peace and keep you comforted. If it is wrong for you, you will be able to see this because there will be no peace and no comfort, just anxiety, stress, fear, sadness, etc. His plan is to bring judgment to this world and establish his kingdom. And when we are moving according to his plan, that means that this is as much a priority to us as it is for him. Don't be one that says, yeah, I love God, but I also got goals I need to accomplish here. No, make him your priority and he will provide you with all the support and validation that you need. He will provide you with peace that passes understanding. All these people that are rich, successful, and wealthy, all these well-known celebrities, they look like they have it all. But what they don't have is peace, which is why so many of them resort to drug abuse. Don't follow them. Their way leads to death. Follow Yah and his path, which leads to life. Make him your priority and what you live for. Understand, there's nothing wrong with positivity and positive thinking. But it is wrong when it goes against Yah and his word. A lot of times, these thoughts are actually a new age religious belief masqueraded around and mingled in Christianity. If you are a believer in Yahusha the Messiah and the word of Yah is your source, your view should always align with the word. Always make sure that your doctrine and views align with all scripture. The truth is, there is an awesome hope for those that believe on the master Yahusha. But the harder truth is there is also judgment and hardship for those that don't believe in him. If your views are aligned more with the world and not really with what Yah says about the world, stop everything you're doing and repent. Read his word for understanding, correctness, guidance, and discernment. Match your future with what Elohim has said about it. Forget about all the rest. If you are a believer in Yahusha the Messiah and are a member of his church, Completely surrender your life to him and be ready for the time of our redemption is near. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please do not forget to like it and share this video with others. If you have not done so already, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Please don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I'd like to thank all who support this ministry. You know who you are. Your contributions truly bless this ministry, and I'm very thankful and humbled by your support. Thank you for being a blessing. Okay, thanks again, everyone, for watching. Be strong, be ready and be blessed. I love you all.